Hey YouTube, this is the Death Scouter making another video, and this time we're going to be talking about the four-wheel drive options that were available on the 2003 Jeep Liberty, specifically the Jeep Select Track options. So there's Select Track and there is Command Track. So if you Take a look at this picture and you say, hey, my four-wheel drive doesn't have four time, four part-time and four full-time, then you have the command track. Okay, this is the select track, and this is what I get a lot of people asking me uh, how they work. So let's take a look at our settings. The first setting is two-wheel drive. Uh, this is the t setting that you typically use when you're driving around um, on on dry roads and you know nice paved surfaces where you don't need uh, the four-wheel drive features and then the, comes the first of the 4x4 four four options so there's four-wheel drive part-time <coughs> and there is four-wheel drive full-time And then there are also these settings here where you can put the transfer case into neutral or you can go into a low range 4x4 setting. Now the neutral setting is very helpful because if your vehicle is going to be towed, you would put your vehicle in neutral. What this does for you is this disconnects your wheels from the transmission. And if you did not have this neutral option in your 4x4 settings, or even if you're towing a regular automobile that um, you know would not have a neutral setting for the for the transfer case, you would have to get under the vehicle and disconnect the drive shaft. Because if the wheels are spinning, then the differential is spinning, and if the differential is spinning, the drive shaft is spinning, and if the drive shaft is spinning so is the transfer case or if your vehicle doesn't have a transfer case directly into the transmission. So if you're spinning the tranny without running the engine that means you're not circulating the transmission fluids up to the cooler and therefore if you're towing your vehicle for um, a considerable distance or for a considerable amount of time you could literally, bur literally burn up your transmission just from towing the car. So if you uh, want to avoid all of that trouble just put the thing in in neutral and you're good to go four-wheel drive low range these are for high torque settings uh, high torque situations they will give you about three times the torque that you normally get out of the four-wheel drive setting uh, this will um, correct number is you know the actual number from Jeep is 2.73 to 1 rate torque ratio uh, we'll round that up to three because it's easier to say three um, so you'll get three times the torque and you'll also be limited to one-third of the speed um, this is not the setting you'd use to go to the market in the middle of the snowstorm this is the setting you would be using to go up a very steep hill or or going very slow with lots of power when people are perhaps bouldering or pulling their buddy out of a mud puddle this is the setting you use when you need every ounce of power that the engine can deliver. Um, so this is not your typical 4x4 setting. It's typically not a range you would use much unless you're a serious off-roader. So let's take a look at your drivetrain. This is your powertrain. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm uh, dealing with lots of, lots of uh, allergies right now this time of year. So what you're looking at here is the rear wheels spinning in the two-wheel drive mode of operation. So you're looking at the differential uh, for the front wheels connecting back through the drive shaft to this little silver box in the center of your screen. This is your transfer case. So when I talk about shifting the gears on the transfer case, it's this little box that we're talking about. Off the top of the transfer case, this thing that looks like a French horn. This is your transmission. The end of the transmission would then be connected to the back of your motor. Obviously not part of this picture and not part of this discussion. And then off the back of the transfer case is the rear drive shaft connecting to the rear differentials and, of course, connected to the rear wheels. So 
Uh, two wheel drive, 100% of the torque of the engine is, is distributed back to the rear differential and spins the rear wheels. So this is what you're used to when, when you're uh, talking about two wheel drive or normal operation. What happens with this, this is a, uh, Jeeps have what's called an open differential. That means that uh, they, the, the transfer case and the differential, <clears throat> actually it's the differential, will transfer the majority of the torque to the wheel that spins the easiest. So imagine you have one of your rear wheels sitting in a mud puddle off the side of the road. The other tire is sitting on the, the paved street. Uh, one tire is going, the tire in the mud is going to spin. The other one's not going to get any, any power at all. And you're going to be stuck and you're either going to have to uh, put it into one of the other four wheel drive modes or you're going to be stranded. Um, so let's talk about those four wheel drive modes to get you out of those situations where one tire spins and the rest of the, the car just sits there. So the first setting that you come to on your shift different, uh, on your shifter for your, uh, transfer case is four wheel drive part time. So what you see here <clears throat> is that you've now split through the transfer case 50% of the torque to the front wheels, 50% of the torque to the rear wheels. So your front wheels and your rear wheels are now locked together. Um, they are they are they are synchronized through the transfer case so that if the front wheels spin so do the rear. Uh, this is listed as part-time use and the reason it's called part-time is that you would only use this setting when you're actually off-roading or on a surface condition where the wheels will have, where there be some what we call slippage. Once you get this vehicle back onto a uh, a hard top surface or a paved road where the all four wheels would have traction, you would not want to stay in four wheel drive part time mode because um, you know as you turn the wheel, you will notice that the wheel gets very stiff. That is because um, the wheels travel at different speeds when you're turning, right? So imagine you're turning to the left. Your inner wheels would have to traverse a smaller arc. Your outside wheels have to spin faster because they have to traverse a wider arc. Uh, and then the difference between, you know, the inner and the outer is slippage, right? You, you, your wheels need to spin at different speeds from each other. You would not get that in this setting. And so what you will feel in the steering wheel is that tension that's being put on the drivetrain, the extra strain that's on the drivetrain. And actually, as you turn the wheel and drive on, on the pavement, it's not unusual to have what's called wheel skipping, where the, you'll actually start dragging your tire across the pavement and hearing your, your rubber screech and, and squeal. Um, because you know the, the the power of the engine is going to push the Jeep, and you're going to drag that tire across the pavement faster, uh, or you're going to drag that tire across the pavement because the wheels cannot slip out of sync with each other. So, uh, a great this is a great setting when you're four wheeling. It's not the setting you would use on dry pavement. So all four wheels spin at the same time in part time mode. So the second setting for four-wheel drive is this. This is the full-time mode. Now, the interesting thing about this is that there is a, a clutch slippage uh, mechanism within the transfer case. This does allow the front wheels and the rear wheels to uh, spin differently from each other, which is important when you're, um, you know, driving on a surface that, uh, you know, all four wheels would have traction. There's a split in the torque, um, the different gear ratio, so therefore different torque distribution. So uh, a little bit less torque to the front, 48% to the front, 52% to the rear. And what this does, it allows the rear wheels to spin <clears throat> differently than the front. And because you now have this slippage, you can actually run your vehicle all the time in a full-time four-wheel drive mode 
and never have to worry about should I or shouldn't I, when do I, when don't I shift in and out of four-wheel drive mode. If you just keep the vehicle <clears throat> in four-wheel drive full-time mode, you can drive like this all the time. And it's interesting because um, when you look at the fact that you're now doing half of the pushing with the rear differential and half of the pushing with the front differential, this setting <clears throat> is actually mechanically um, better for your vehicle. Uh, your your your, your drivetrain will actually last longer driving in a four-wheel drive mode because you're now splitting the torque evenly but amongst two different axles than when you had just two-wheel drive mode and, and the rear differential was doing, had all the strain on it to propel the vehicle. So... Uh, you could put it in four-wheel drive full-time and drive like this forever. Uh, so this is the difference between full-time and part-time. The full-time being that you can be on dry, non-slipping surfaces, whereas the part-time, you can only be on slipping surfaces, and when you get onto the non-slipping surfaces, you need to get out of that, that mode of the transfer case. So all the wheels turn on four-wheel drive, but the front and the rear can slip from each other making this a, a full-time option that did not exist with the second with the previous setting. So there's the explanation of the select track four-wheel drive. Um, hope that was of value to you. I am the Death Scouter. I am not a certified mechanic. I am a guy who simply works on my own Jeep and tries to do my own repairs to save money. And frankly, if I can do these repairs, then anybody can. And I document them as best I can uh, with my camera and put the videos out on YouTube to show you, you know, what a guy just like you would be going through if you tackled this yourself. So my camera works not always the greatest. Um, <clears throat> so I apologize for that up front. But I do try to hold the camera as I'm doing the work. Sometimes it's a little jittery. Sometimes it's, you know, not where it should be. But in the end, I think my videos are pretty helpful. And we'll give you a pretty good idea of what you're going to be in for, um, you know, when you attempt any of the repairs. And here's a quick list of the repairs that I've got videos for already. Um, typically, anything, any time that I work on my car or any of the cars that I own, I go ahead and I make a video and I stick it on YouTube because you never know when somebody needs a little extra help. And that's why I have this channel, right? We're all here to help each other. And if I can help you save some money and keep your Jeep alive and well, uh, my Jeep's at about 220,000 miles. Um, they're, they're just so easy to work on that I'll be, you know, mechanically I'll have this Jeep up until the body falls apart because uh, there's nothing on this Jeep that's not actually pretty easy to get to, which is part of the reason I love Jeeps and non-front-wheel drive cars is because they're so easy to get to everything. And, uh, of course, uh, subscribe to my channel. I'd love to have you. And until then, I am the Death Scouter, and I'd love to see you subscribe to my, to my network. Thank you.